Mazen Kerala Infectious Disease and Critical Care Medicine, an update on COVID-19 as of April 23rd, 2020. A study that was published in JAMA on the 22nd of April, looking at uh, those patients who were admitted with COVID-19 in New York uh, City area. <clears throat> Total of 5,700 patients, 56.6 uh, uh, had hypertension, 33.8% diabetes, uh, smoker uh, status, whether currently smokers or uh, previously <clears throat> were smoking, 15.6%. Uh, Coronary artery disease in 11.1%. Uh, 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 obesity with BMI 30 and above uh, was seen in 41.7%. Other comorbidities included uh, asthma, uh, congestive heart failure, cancers, uh, COPD, uh, chronic kidney disease. I did not include anything that uh, uh, was less than 5% but they included patients with chronic liver disease, HIV, and immunosuppression too. Median age was 63 years, 60% uh, of patients were males. Uh, comorbidity of more than one uh, was present in 88% uh, of cases, and negative PCR was seen in 1.9% only compared to what's reported from the Chinese people of close to 30%. <clears throat> Temperature of more than 38 uh, centigrade was uh, seen only in 30.7% of cases. And absolute lymphocyte count was uh, uh, seen in 60%. Uh, 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 the level was less than 1000. And you can see also that uh, D-dimers, uh, ferritin, C-reactive protein, lactic, lactate uh, dehydrogenase were elevated uh, in different ranges on uh, admission. Outcome measures, uh, ICU admission rate was seen in 14.2% of all uh, admitted patients to the hospital. Also, uh, invasive mechanical ventilation rate was 12.2% of all patients. Renal replacement uh, therapy was uh, uh, seen in 3.2%. Overall mortality rate was 21%, with a mortality rate uh, reaching up to 88% for those patients who were on mechanical ventilation. Mortality rate was uh, much higher in uh, males compared to females. They've seen no mortality, no deaths uh, in patients uh, less than 19 or 19 years uh, or less, but they only had 14 patients in their population. You can see increasing mortality rate with increasing age, and it's always higher in males compared to <coughs> females, <coughs> excuse me. Mortality rate for those patients uh, in higher uh, age groups uh, uh, were much higher than in younger population. Another uh, study that uh, is uh, put as a preprint, and this is uh, on uh, Matrix IV, uh, looking at uh, the outcomes of hydroxychloroquine uh, usage in the United States uh, in uh, veterans uh, hospitalized uh, with COVID-19. Again, uh, this is not a peer-reviewed uh, uh, study yet. It is uh, posted on uh, uh, Matrix uh, IV, uh, which is uh, only to get feedback. So. It is uh, noted that uh, in this uh, study, they had a total of 368 patients. Uh, it is a retrospective analysis uh, looking at uh, those patients who were hospitalized and treated with uh, hydroxychloroquine uh, compared to uh, another group with hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin versus no hydroxychloroquine. This is at uh, the Veterans Health Administration uh, Medical Centers uh, 
looking at all those patients who were admitted uh, in their hospitals up till uh, April 11, 2020. They had 97 patients treated with hydroxychloroquine, 113 patients treated with a combination of hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin, and 158 uh, patients were not treated with uh, uh, any of these medications. Looking at the mortality rate here, uh, it was higher in the hydroxychloroquine group, 27.8%, with a hazard ratio of uh, 2.6. Those patients were at risk of death, uh, 2.5 on average, uh, higher than other patients who were not uh, getting hydroxychloroquine. If uh, hydroxychloroquine was combined with uh, azithromycin, mortality rate was 22%. The hazard ratio is uh, 1.14 and not statistically significant. Compared to 11.4% mortality rate for those patients who did not uh, receive hydroxychloroquine. It is actually uh, confusing a bit. Uh, mechanical ventilation rate uh, was 13.3% in hydroxychloroquine group compared to 14.1% in uh, uh, patients who did not receive hydroxychloroquine. It was only 6.9% in patients who received hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin. So this raises so many uh, questions about uh, whether these uh, results are uh, valid or not. Uh, patients' characteristics uh, need to be uh, studied carefully before final uh, conclusion can be made out of this uh, study. However, they concluded uh, that there is no evidence that the use of hydroxychloroquine uh, either with or without azithromycin reduced the risk of mechanical ventilation in patients hospitalized with COVID-19. But they also reported an association of increased overall mortality that was identified in patients treated with hydroxychloroquine alone. Uh, again, I want to emphasize that this is a preprint only. The study was not peer-reviewed. It needs to be <coughs> reviewed and uh, published in uh, official journals before, before we can accommodate uh, these results. However, it raises so many questions about uh, the use of hydroxychloroquine as we expected. Just wanted to uh, present uh, this uh, that was published in uh, New England Journal of Medicine a few days ago looking at the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system inhibitors in patients with COVID-19. And essentially, what uh, we, know, we know so far that uh, <coughs> we uh, need more studies in order to look into the issue of uh, whether those medications can be uh, eff uh, effective in preventing the severity of illness or uh, they may be associated with uh, higher risk. The, uh, uh, what they concluded is that uh, for sure abrupt withdrawal of those uh, inhibitors in high-risk patients, including those who have heart failure or uh, uh, have had myocardial infarction, may result uh, in clinical instability and adverse health outcomes. Uh, until further uh, data uh, are available, uh, we think that uh, those medications uh, should be continued in patients with uh, uh, stable conditions who are at risk uh, for or being evaluated uh, for uh, or with uh, COVID-19. Uh, one uh, last thing I want to uh, share with you is the cytokine storm syndrome. Uh, now we know that uh, we have three types of uh, uh, course, uh, courses uh, that we, we've seen with those patients, uh, the hyperacute uh, uh, course, uh, patients presenting to us with severe hypoxemia, respiratory distress, leading to immediate intubation, mechanical ventilation, or even death. We also have seen the indolent uh, course, uh, patients presenting to us uh, with moderate hypoxemia and moderate work of breathing, but they improve over time and they recover. We have seen uh, a course uh, that is uh, biphasic, Patients start with uh, indolent uh, course, uh, and typically around five uh, to seven days, uh, they go into uh, acute deterioration with hyperinflation, inflammation, and uh, they uh, start having uh, fever, uh, hypotension, 
ARDS like picture, uh, acute kidney injury, encephalopathy, uh, even rhabdomyolysis, and DIC. If you measure the uh, uh, ferritin in those patients, would be higher than admission. D dimers are uh, higher, uh, CRP, LDH, uh, CK also, and uh, typically interleukin 6 uh, would be high. And uh, in these patients, uh, you would uh, consider uh, steroids, uh, number one, to decrease the inflammatory reaction, but you need to make sure that those patients <coughs> do not have uh, uh, any uh, other uh, infections that may uh, predispose those patients to uh, worse outcome with uh, steroids. And also those patients should be considered for uh, uh, anti uh, uh, anti uh, interleukin-6 uh, antibodies such as tocilizumab. With this, uh, I would like to conclude uh, today's uh, update on COVID-19 and hope everyone stays safe. Thank you very much.